acute angle trigonometry and in this lesson we're going to be using the sine law. So the first thing we want to do is prove the sine law and this is much easier than it sounds. So the first thing we have a triangle here ABC it's an acute triangle. Acute angle triangle means all the angles are less than 90 degrees. So the first thing I'm going to do is label the sides. So remember that the sides are labeled with the lowercase letters of the vertices opposite from them. So this would be side C, this would be side A, and this would be side B. The next thing we're going to do is draw a perpendicular from this vertice here. You could draw it from either one of these, and you'll see that that would help you finish the proof, but we're going to do it right from here. So dropping a perpendicular means you're falling straight down from the vertice vertice perpendicular and landing right like here. So now I have actually two triangles here. I have two right angle triangles. On this side I have triangle A, B and let's label this point here D and I have triangle so ADB or ABD whatever way you want to say it and ABACD. So if we look at triangle ABD D. So let's let, first of all, the H be the height. So we're going to label this H here. So if I look at triangle ABD, so I'm going to say in triangle ABD, if I asked you what the sine of B would, would be, would be for the sine of B, and you'd say, well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so that would be H over C. And if I asked you how you could represent the height in terms of this, you'd say, well, the height is C times the sine of B. So just rearranging, so I have C sine B. Now let's go to the other triangle. So we did A, B, that should have been D, A, B, D, A, B, D. Now we're going to do A, C, D. Triangle A, C, D. The sine of C now, so I'm here, the sine would be H over B. And that means that H is equal to B times the sine of C. Okay, so now we have two equations for H. So if I told you that H was this and H was this, then that means that this is equal to this, right? Just like we said before, if I said 4 is equal to 3 plus 1 and 4 is equal to 2 plus 2, then I know that 3 plus 1 is equal to 2 plus 2. That's just showing you how this all works. So if I say H is this and H is that, then C times the sine of B is going to be equal to B times the sine of C. And my pen is running out of ink, so we're going to switch colors here. So now if I went ahead and decided, well, I just want to get rid of these C's and B's. So if I divide both sides by C and B, and this one doesn't work for me either, well, it's a B and C, it doesn't matter which way you order them, then what's going to happen here is that the C's can cancel out and these B's can cancel out, or they actually divide into each other and end up with this little equation that says the sine of B over B is equal to the sine of C over C. And if we went back and did this exercise all over again and dropped the perpendicular from B across this way, you could do the same calculation and find in the end that that would also mean that the sine of A over A. So the ratio of the sides, the sine to the side length, is the same for all three. Now, you can write it this way, or maybe if I told you um, let's write it over here. If I said 3 over 4 is equal to 6 over 8, you could also say that 4 over 3 is equal to 8 over 6, couldn't you? So that means that this formula here could be written with the sign on the top or on the bottom. 
So I could also write it like this. A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. Okay, so that's the rule that we're going to work with. Now I'm going to show you when to use it and how to use it. Let's slide up here. So when to use the sine law. So you have an acute triangle, no 90 degree angles. If you have 90 degrees, you can go right ahead and use your primary trig ratios, right? All the angles are less than 90 degrees. So you also have to have two angles and one side length or two sides and one angle opposite one of the sides. So let's take a look at what I've drawn here because this one, one here, is representing this two angles and one side length. So if I look at the sides here now, so this B, this is side B here. Remember, they go opposite. This is side C, this is side A. So I have this side length and I have two angles. So if I have two angles, I can find the third very easily. Right? You know that three angles in a triangle add up to 180. So angle B, I would find first of all, angle B is going to be 180 degrees minus 40 plus 63. Right? That's going to give me that third angle. So that comes out to um, 77 degrees. So I can, I can find this one out if it wasn't given to me. Now, there's a very interesting little pattern that you will know when you can use the sine law. So remember, you're going to need to have three out of four pieces of information. So that means that if I have this side, this side here is 16 with this angle, so I'm going to make a little line around it like this because you're going to see it does something really interesting and easy to remember. So if I have that, and I have another one, so I can make an X. So with this angle here, I could solve for side C. So I could go like this. Now see how it makes this nice X pattern? Now I could also have used this information and use the other side here. I could have done A with 40 degrees. I forgot this was a pen that doesn't work. Okay, so you're going to look for, you only need two of these X's, right? Two, two, um, two sides to make an X, so this one and this one. So from this information here, I could find uh, side length C. So I would say, mm, I'm trying to find C. So C over the sine of 63 degrees is equal to, and here's the one that I have. Okay, you need one that has both the side and the angle with it. So this is going to be 16 over the sine of 77 degrees. So the rest of this is easy. All you need is a little calculator. So remember your little n thing going on here. So C is going to be this times this divided by that. Right? So C equals sine 63 degrees. So this times this and we're going to divide by the sine of 77 degrees and that's going to give you side length C. So you need to pull in your calculator to finish that so I'm going to say sine 63 times 16 um, divided by the sine of 77 and I get approximately 14.6 and then you would give a concluding statement. I just meant this to be a little example. I wasn't really going to do the whole question. But you could go ahead and do the other side length because you have um, A over the sine of 40 equals 16 over the sine of 77. So likewise with this one here, you can see which, which angle could I solve for with this information. So I have this angle and this side length and I have this side length so I'm going to go across because I want to go across from it here to make this X pattern so this is going to be 10 times 
this one. So 10 goes to this angle and 12 goes to this one. So if I wrote out the sine law for that, I'd say, well, let's do it the other way around. Let's say the sine of 88 degrees over the length is equal to the sine of, well, I don't have it, so I'm just going to say angle R, sine of R over 10. Now to solve for the sine of R, remember we're going to do our little N pattern. So sine R equals 10 times sine 88 divided by 12. So I can do that all in one step. Sine R equals 10 sine 88 degrees. Don't forget your degrees when you're writing these things out. Divided by 12. Now remember this is going to give me a ratio, right? When I have the sine of R. So I'm going to do 10 times sine 88 divided by 12. And look, I get a ratio, 0.8328. So I'm going to write approximately 0.8328. Now if I want the angle, remember we're going to do shift sine of this answer. So you can do it all in one step. Second sine, so it takes me to the taking it the other way to give me the angle from the ratio and I get about 56 degrees 56 let's say 0.4 degrees okay so that's how this all works it's very simple especially if you look for this sort of an X pattern okay, let's do a couple more examples and then you can do some homework on your own. I'm sure your teacher will have assigned some nice practice for you. Practice makes perfect. So this question is very specific. It says determine the length of AC. Now really, um, I should mention here that sometimes when you have something like this, you might be asked to solve the triangle. And when they ask you to solve a triangle, it means find all the angles and all of the side lengths. Okay, so don't, um, don't stop when you've done one of them if it's asked to solve the triangle. This one, where I was asking you for a specific length, determine the length of AC. So the length of AC is actually side B, right? That's B. So I'm looking for a way to make an X here. So B and this angle, that's great. But I have this angle and I don't have this side, but I have this side length. So again, you have to figure out what this angle is first. It's always a good idea to write on any information you can add to a triangle before you begin. So 45 and 55, that's 100. So that means this one up here is 80 degrees. So now I can make my other branch for my X. So that means I can use the sine law. Now you might be saying, oh, well, that's pretty obvious. But when we get into when do you need to use the next law, which is a cosine law, you won't be able to do this. That's when you're going to use the other law. So determine the length of AC. So I'm going to say, um, well, let's write it out in long form first. So sine A over A equals sine B over B. This should have been lowercase. Okay, so sine of A, so that's the sine of 80 degrees over A, which is 12, equals the sine of 55 degrees divided by B. So let's just write that this, we call that B. So now B equals sine 55 times 12 divided by sine 80. B equals sine 55 degrees times 12 divided by sine of 80 and again you're going to go to your calculator now there's no shifting here because we're finding a length right so this is going to give me the length it's going to do a ratio so sine of 55 times 12 and we're going to divide that by the sine of 80 and I get approximately equal to 9.98 maybe your teacher will say round it up to the nearest unit and what you'd say 10 so 9.98 
meters. Okay, this one, you don't have the triangle drawn for you. You have to draw it yourself. So it says, in triangle DST, DST, so let's get a, a little ruler here. Angle D is 47 degrees. Okay, so let's make a triangle here. So we're going to call this D, and angle D is 47 degrees. Well, if you want to get really fancy, you can get out a protractor. Not really necessary, as long as you can make it kind of where it should be. So it's about 47 degrees there. I'm going to draw that up like that. And we're going to come down here to T. So triangle D, S, T. Angle D is 47 degrees. You should be able to draw these. You know, you don't really need to have it drawn for you. You can do it. Um, D is 47 degrees. Side D, so this is D over here. Remember, it's very important that you know where they go. 78, seven, 78 centimeters. S is 106 centimeters. That's a little S. And you want to know angle S. Okay, so I'm going to get up my pen first and I'm going to draw my little pattern here. So I have this one and this one. And I have this one and I'm trying to find this angle. So that's perfect. So I can just do like this. And there we go. So we're going to write out our equation. And what do we have here? Angle S. So the sine of S over little s is equal to we have angle D, so that's the one we're going to use, the sine of 47 degrees over um, D. Oh, I guess I could have written out in letters first. I could have put a, a capital D here first, but it's neither here nor there. So sine S divided by little s, which is 106, is going to be the sine of 47 degrees over D, which is 78. That's a length. And so sine S is 106 times the sine of 47 divided by 78. Sine S equals 106 times sine 47 divided by 78. Get out your calculator and you know that you're going to need to do that shift at the end here. So 106 times the sine of 47 divided by 78 and I get 0.9 approximately equal to 0.9939. I'm just going to leave all that in there as I do the shift here. So second sign of my answer, that's the best way to do it without losing accuracy, and I get angle S is approximately equal to 83.9. Point seven degrees. Okay, so that's how you use the sine law. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I find always that this helps making these X patterns, like chromosomes. Um, the reason I like to do that, again, is because when we go to do the sine law or the cosine law, you're going to know that the sine law doesn't work. And you always want to do things in that order where you start with your primary trig ratio. Don't have 90 degrees? No. Can you use the sign law? And can you use the sign law means can you make this pattern? And in the next lesson when we do the cosine law, I'll show you um, why all of a sudden this doesn't work and that leaves you with the next option which is to use the cosine law. So come back for the next lesson and we'll see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video too is kind of a nice thing to do. Bye!